Hey friends, it is Wednesday and that means it's Ask a Flower Farmer and it is your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler here and I'm coming to you from the warehouse. I just got here to the Fulfillment Center and I can't wait to tell you what I've been doing all morning um, and you're going to be very impressed with this 61 year old flower farmer. So before I get all involved in talking to y'all about farming, I want everybody to be aware that tomorrow night, Thursday, let's see, what is tomorrow? Today's the 12th, October 13th. That's for people watching this after the fact. I am doing a free webinar with Jenny Love on, I can't remember the exact name, but it's like how to have more profits, how weddings and events is the most profitable thing to do with your flowers. And not only is it going to be an amazing discussion with me and Jenny, I mean, she just offers so much good bones information that you absorb. But in addition to that, y'all, I am giving away $2,000 worth of stuff. I'm giving away a couple of her courses. Her course opens on Saturday, Flower Farming School, Flower, I'm sorry, Farmer Florist School, the wedding process opens on Saturday for five short days. And this is not a design course at all, y'all. This is 100% business. This is like the contracts, what you should grow, how to handle brides, and marketing, and how to figure out pricing. She gives equations for you to figure all that out. Her course is really over the top. And I, in fact, would wish that it wasn't named the wedding process because I believe that Anybody in business can benefit, flower farm in business. If you're selling flowers, this course can help you. Anyway, I'm giving away two of her courses tomorrow night during the live event. To sign up and request a link to be invited, it's in my profile. So just go, it's right at the top. And that is tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and then it will be available for a replay, but friends, it's only available for 24 hours. We are not leaving it up indefinitely. It's just for those folks that can't possibly make the live, we give them 24 hours to watch it and then it'll be taken down. And I can tell you that it will have some good meat in that um, chat. So you do not want to miss it. And um, I also want to say that Jenny's course has incredible marketing information. She talks about Google and Pinterest and Instagram. I mean, the big picture of it. You know, marketing was kind of her training before she became a flower farmer. That's where she was in the corporate world, was a marketing person. And she there's great information in there. Um, so I encourage you to join us tomorrow night. And if nothing else, get on her wait list over at thegardenersworkshop.com for her course so you don't miss registration. Um, her course also actually has some bonus courses um, or bonus sessions based on COVID um, because, I mean, in the middle of her course being launched, COVID happened. And she talks about how she recovered and what she did and how COVID has changed weddings forever and applies all of that. Um, so anyway, so don't miss the opportunity. Please tell your friends. The link is in my profile for you to get an invite to the free webinar with Jenny Love um, talking about the profitability of weddings and events. But even more fun, I'm giving away not only two courses, we're also giving away some flower farmer gear, but you have got to be there to claim it. So don't miss out. 7 p.m. Eastern Time, October 13th. Be there or be without. That's what all I have to say about that. So if you're new here, um, the way this works is if you type your question in the little bubble down below that has a question mark in it, that way I don't potentially miss your question trying to go through all of the names that are scrolling by as people come and go for the live. Um, so put your questions down there and I will answer them. And before we do that, I got to tell you all what I've been doing all morning. Well, yesterday. So, you know, I'm like everybody else. I'm behind. Um, October 1st is my optimal cool flower planting time. Doesn't always happen that way. And I always try to at least come close to being close to that date for my direct seeding. Well, that hadn't been done. So yesterday and today, I prepared our direct seeded beds. Um, and that meant, are y'all ready for this? 
because I still can't even believe it. I unloaded six, no, five of those cubic yard totes, which is one cubic yard, 2,000 pounds of compost soil mix on top of my direct seeded beds. Our soil is too wet to work, so we just literally topped our existing beds with a few inches of this mixture of killer soil so that I'm going to direct seed tonight because guess what? Tomorrow rain is coming for the first time. I mean, we're so short on rain this year. So I literally, yesterday I shoveled 4,000 pounds. This morning, like, and it's now 1230. I just took, I took two Excedrin before I came on here because I can feel my back already starting to like tense up. Um, I unloaded with a shovel by myself three of those totes, which is the equivalent of basically 6,000 pounds. And, you know, I think I'm done for the year. <laughs> I think I've done all my work. Anyway, I feel great. I mean, physical labor definitely invigorates me. But this is what Bobo and the conclusion Bobo and I came to this morning. She was planting transplants kind of close to where I was shoveling. And we think that part of the reason that I had su I have such amazing success in growing plants is my obsession with soil. Like, not many people would have done what I did. They would have just fixed those beds, pulled some troughs, and put some seeds in them, right? Um, but I knew that the likelihood of these seeds being fabulous come spring would be helped by me putting the soil down. And I've always done this. Back when I first started farming, I had, a, I had no tractor, right? Just a tiller, um, a walk-behind tiller, a wheelbarrow, and a shovel. I mean, do I sound like a dinosaur or what? I used to put 13 to 17 wheelbarrow loads of compost on every bed before I planted it. And I got away as I got bigger and got more equipment. You know, we didn't do that quite that way anymore. We started growing cover crops. And you know how you just kind of stop doing things. Well, this morning and yesterday, as I was preparing these new, um, not new, these beds, these uh, permanent beds, um, it just brought back all the memories of how I worked my butt off topping my beds off with compost all those years, which is what made me into what I am today. And this morning and yesterday, I have kind of brought it back. And so friends, there is no quick and simple. There is no piece of equipment, um, the way that my garden is set up. And, you know, I'm just here to say it is good for you and you sleep better at night. And I'm just stoked to go home. I'm planting so many direct seeded crops this year. Um, some experimenting, others are standards, and I'm just super excited. Um, because once you have your, once you start building your soil and focusing, I focus like 90% on the soil and 10% on, oh yeah, I guess I better get the seeds. You know, what am I going to plant? Where I think most other people, it's the complete flip of that. They are so focused on the flowers. The soil is the afterthought, and I am not that way. And I just think that's the se the secret to my success. All right, we got a bunch of questions. My snap seedlings look sick, sickly. Not sure why. The grow light is the large one from your site, and it's about two inches above, 16 hours of light, and have used fertilizer once a week. Ideas, they are a bit leggy and yellow, watering once a day. Um, I would say potentially, um, I bet they're not drying out between waterings. Um, it sounds like you have light. I don't know what your air temperature is, um, but overwatering is the number one thing that makes plants, transplants sluggish. And so I would, um, tomorrow morning before you water, you need to put your finger on this, those blocks. And if they aren't dry, dry, um, then they are staying wet 24 seven and that inhibits their growth. They just, they can't breathe. They can't, um, you know, like they're drowning basically. Um, so that would be my first investigation and to get seedlings out, um, to dry out in between, sorry y'all, um, to dry out in between waterings, that's all about the air temperature. So it may be too cool when you're growing them. So check that out. Four Bird Farm, silly question. Do you harden off cool flowers before planting? Thank you. See you in school. Um, so must be a student. I'm so stoked. We have a great class um, and I'm really excited about school starting November 1st. 
So you, I mean, that's a really loaded question. Sorry, y'all, I'm about half dressed here. Literally, I jumped off a tractor, changed my shirt, washed my face, and here I am. Um, so cool flowers, if you're planting them into cool like conditions, oftentimes um, don't need a full-fledged hardening off. I think it's always a good idea to actually, I have a carport is where my seedlings go, to have them out there for a few days before you plant them out in the garden. Because if you're planting them out in the garden and it's still warm outside, you don't really want to be covering them with a row cover, which will concentrate the heat, which can be, oh, heat is tougher on seedly, cool season flowers than um, warm is, I mean, than cool is. So I would say as a general rule, yes, I would harden them off, but you can harden cool flowers off in the garden by hooping and row covering them. But like white we are now, it is way too warm during the day to be able to do that. So we're hardening them off on the carport five to seven days. They get morning and afternoon sun, a little wind. Um, so they're pretty darn happy when they actually get to the garden. So see you in school. How far apart are your hoops? Um, in general, hoops should be 10 to 12 feet. Um, depends on, you know, the length of time that you're going to actually be using them. Um, if you're putting them down for all winter, I would do 10 feet. Um, closer is better. If you have enough hoops, I have enough hoops to actually do 8 feet. And that just makes a sturdier tunnel. But I have been known to go 12 feet when I needed to. Hayden. Our first frost date is around the last week of December to the first week of January. Is it too late to start cool season annuals? No. So, and I, you know, I, I wished I had a real little recording. I could just hit the button so I don't have to say this over and over because this is a really common question. And I'm glad people ask because here it is in a nutshell. There are two... The cool flowers, some of them prefer to be direct sown, some prefer transplants. Transplants, for sure, will give you more wiggle room. You can plant transplants of cool flowers. As long as the ground's not frozen, you can definitely still plant them. So I'm saying to you, no, it's not too late. Just hop to it and get them, in the, you know, get them going and in the ground. It's the direct seeding that you really need to have at least you know, four to six weeks of warmish days to get them to sprout. That's what my dilemma is now. We're getting cooler earlier than we have for years this year. I mean, total opposite of the past years. Um, and that's what put the pedal to the metal for me is it's like looking at the two-week forecast. We have nights going down in the low 40s, which is fine. It won't hurt them, but it doesn't enhance germination <laughs> for those direct seeding. So I'll be laying row cover probably on top of my direct seeded beds at some point to help concentrate the sun. Um, so you should be fine to still start transplants to plant out in the garden. Hello, Mark. What is the latest you plant crimson clover? Um, so crimson clover is a cool season hardy annual and it's a direct seeded, right? So it needs enough time to get germinated, which takes seven to 10 days, and then to grow up a little bit, because the whole point of planting it in the fall is for it to get a little canopy to protect your soil. So I would say you need at least three to four weeks um, before your last frost date. And it just, again, depends. Now, look how cold it is here at night. Um, so I haven't planted any, and I'm hoping now that it's going to rain tomorrow, I may, I may not get any cool season cover crops in this year. Just depends on how wet the soil is. Um, and so this year is a year that waiting a little later than I should have is not paying off. It has paid off in the near future. So I would say they need at least three to four weeks. Will it be okay to plant seedlings out after the first frost? Again, yes. Um, you just need to, once if the ground's not frozen and it's prepared, you can continue to plant, and if you feel like um, if you feel like maybe it's too chilly, then hoop and cover them. That's what we would do. I'm in East Tennessee, and we're cooling fast, just like you. So we need to lay the frost cloth directly on the ground to cover our seeds. So yeah, that's what can happen. Um, so what 
The benefit of doing that, so if you direct seed and then just put your row covers down flat, you know, don't put any hoops um, and just weight it down, that just concentrates the sunshine underneath there. I mean, but it's a pain in the butt because then you have to move the row cover to be able to hoe. You know, I mean, it's like this is why doing things on time is such a time saver, y'all. Um, so yes, co row cover will concentrate heat and help your stuff germinate. And I'm actually, I haven't taken the time to look at the two week forecast to decide what I'm going to do. Bobo and I'll do that tomorrow after I get the seeds planted this evening. I'm just so happy to get them in the ground before rain. What steps should I be taking for my winter prep for the soil? I'll be cutting the annuals down this week. So if you're talking about we don't really do winter prep for the soil. If you mean what to do to your beds to get them through winter, um, you know, if you're not planting them, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can plant cover crop or you can prepare your beds, you know, pull out what you've got there. If it's not too wet already, prepare the beds for your first spring planting and then cover them with a silage tarp for winter so weeds don't grow or mulch. Um, so it just depends on what comes next for that actual particular space. Susie asks, so what are you direct seeding? That's a really good question. I'm just going to, I'm going to read to you. I have to, it, my memory is gone. So I'm just looking atroplex. I'm just going through our seeds here. I'll be planting atroplex. So all the special bachelor buttons, you know, the magic and um, the romantic and the classic, as well as the pink and the blue boy. Of course, Bells of Ireland will be direct seeded. Buplurum. Wait a minute, y'all. I'm having to look through all. This is all of our seeds. Yeah. Corn cockle, Chinese forget me nots. I'm still looking, y'all, and um, false Queen Anne's lace, which is Dawkins, we do both, start transplants and direct seed, and then just going through. So then, of course, all the, the larkspur, um, and we I'm growing a lot of solid color larkspurs this year, all the nigellas, and I'm trying to look for your poppies the um, champagne bubbles, as well as the giant poppy pods. Um, and any of them that I'm not mentioning means that they're getting straw, they're getting um, direct, they're getting started for transplants. Soapwort, which is saponaria, love that stuff. And I think those are all sunflowers. So all of those, and white lace, which is Orlea. So all of those are, and dill. I didn't get to the dill. Yes, and dill. All of those are the ones I'm direct seeding tonight. Um, and we will see how it goes. I bought a tray of nigella from Farmer Bailey, who has a great new website. And each still had three to six seedlings. Um, somebody, there's, we got, a, somebody's at the door. And each still had three to six seedlings in it. Separate them or plant the whole plug. Um, somebody's coming. <laughs> it's all right. Um, I do. I would not separate them because nigella doesn't branch for us. And so, I mean, we don't thin them. So, why, so I would just plant. So each one of those little clusters, I would plant six inches apart. But I wouldn't thin them out. And I bet they'll be just fine. All right, do you cover everything except direct seeded crops if temperatures drop below 25? Um, no. So, how will I say this? So, first off, I don't consider putting up any row covers unless it's going below 25. And when I think of that below 25, it's only those things that I think are vulnerable. And in my zone, right? So, it's like I don't cover the bachelor buttons and nigella and poppies, all those things just smile at that stuff. You know, things that the crops that are really important to me, like Bells of Ireland, I would cover probably. Um, 
but I only cover those depending on how low the temperature is going. What I've learned about row covers is we're so quick because we're so afraid. You know, we're the only ones afraid, y'all. It's not the plants, you know, um, that we're so quick to use row covers. And that actually encourages or can encourage other things to go on underneath the row covers, like disease and pests. So, like, calendula is one of them. Calendula really can be kind of diseased and actually in, in, um, get some pests when you cover it all winter long. So, I only cover it when I really feel like it's threatened. So, you really have to make a judgment call about that is what I'm saying. You know, snapdragons are supposed to be winter hardy until, like, zone five, I think it is. So, I don't even think about covering them unless we are getting some real wind-whipping cold weather, right? So, you just have to use your judgment on that. Dahlia's cut before first wrong. How long can you hold Dahlia in the cooler and holding solution? Um, I'm probably not the person to ask. I don't grow Dahlia's anymore. Um, but we try not to hold Dahlia's at all. Um, I mean, if it's for an event... That's one thing, but dahlia's vase life is short to begin with, just like sweet peas and um, things like that. And so I would say not very long, depending on what, what you're doing with them. With soil blocking, I have your natural. Is it okay to spritz every day and do a full-on soak weekly? I'm a joint home gardener with only eight small cool flower trays. So I'm not sure... With soil blocking, I have your natural. Is it okay to spritz every day and do a full-on soak weekly? So you shouldn't need to do natural, but once a week. Um, and, I mean, when you water on whatever day, you know, if you do it every Wednesday like we do, um, that it should be all that they require. You shouldn't have to spritz. You can certainly spritz your transplants with water or fertilizer or whatever you want, um, but it's not necessary to do natural. You just need to do that once a week. That's all that is required of that. Um, oh. So those are all the questions that are down there. So I want to say again for anybody that's joined us, don't forget that tomorrow night, October 13th, I'm doing a free webinar with Jenny Love um, on profitability with weddings and events. And it's going to be good. Jenny's always, I mean, we just really talk about the nitty-gritty behind the scenes, the, the truth. We don't fluff it at all. Um, and so there is always such good meat and potatoes when she and I have discussions. And we're going to be talking about the profitability of doing weddings and events. And her course, um, I'll be giving away two of her course enrollments. That's $700 each, y'all. $695. Um, plus, I'll be giving away some... Um, some flower farmer gear, and you have to attend live to be eligible. You have to enroll when you when you get there. I'll tell you how to get on the um, to enter for the contest, and um, then also you have to be there live to actually claim and say, "Hey, I'm here," um, to be able to get the prize. So. That is going to be tons of fun, very informative, and so to get to sign up for it, the link is in my profile here on Instagram. So you just go hit the Gardener's Workshop name, go in there, follow that link, and it's the very top one. Um, and it's really going to be great because I haven't talked to Jenny in a while, and she is just a really great business person, which that's what her course is all about, y'all. It is not about flower. It's not about design at all. It is about should you do weddings, how to handle brides, the contracts, the pricing, what you should grow, what you shouldn't grow and should buy from other growers, um, marketing, the equation to do your pricing. Um, it is really, um, it really just has a ton of business stuff in there. And, you know, it's kind of like me sharing earlier about how I think it's my obsession with soil that has led me to be such an amazing flower farmer. But let me tell you the truth. I find that most people aren't that way. They are so focused on what they want to grow and just thinking of the soil as an afterthought. That's how it is with doing events and weddings. Um, they are, they're definitely hard work. Jenny will tell you that. It is very hard work, but it's the most profitable way to sell your flowers. And when you run it like a business and go about it that way, which she takes you through step by step of the whole process in her course, um, 
you it's very, very manageable. It's still stressful. I mean, weddings are just stressful, no matter if you're the bride or the person doing the flowers or the food, right? Um, just because there's just variables, right? So the link to register for the webinar is in my bio. Just follow that link. Um, and you can also get on her wait list through that link. Um, and it's just going to be a really great time tomorrow night. So take advantage of. Any tips on... Any tips on growing Campanula champion, champion? Do you pinch? Farmer Bailey says no pinch. I have never pinched Campanula. Um, and so I agree. And I got my champion Campanula plugs from Bailey. And um, they're beautiful, too, by the way. I just got them. We'll be planting those out. You know, I have a lot of wiggle room left for planting transplants. You know, I mean, we could go three more weeks if we needed to easily. Um, but it's that direct seeded stuff that we're really pushed for. So I would say um, that I'm not pinching them. Um, so, and if Bailey says don't pinch them, then I'd say don't pinch them. We had a frost too late for clover or as cover, so oaks and peas okay to sow now. I don't have any um, experience with oaks or peas. Um, and it's really just about do you have warm enough temperatures? You need to look up. Crimson clover, I know, is hardy to negative 10 degrees, meaning it'll survive winters that, you know, go that low. But I don't remember. I'm sure I've looked at some point in time. You need to look up what is the germination temperature. You know, if you do that, what temperature to germinate crimson clover, it'll come up usually, and it'll tell you it'll take five days at this temperature. It'll take 100 days at this temperature, you know, so it gives you an idea. Is it worth it? Because the problem is this when you're doing when you're doing cover crop, the whole point of cover crop. Well, one of the points is to suppress weeds. And if you plant it later into cooler or conditions that it's not going to sprout fast, guess what does sprout fast? All of the weed seeds that are native to your area. So then they sprout quickly because there's a weed seed to fit every temperature you got going. And then you plant your crover, it's going to be so slow, all the weeds are going to get ahead of it. So that's the process. You want to plant cover crop into conditions to get it to snap quick sprout and go from there. Um, so that's what I would say about that. So here, if Wanda says, I don't plan on doing weddings myself, but took Jenny's class so I would ha know how wedding flowers think, what flowers they're looking for, what colors they need. You know, Thank you, Wanda. Um, and Wanda will now put in the comments, because I count on her for it, that you do know all of our courses are a business expense if you're a flower farmer. But that is so true. If you want to become an expert in your business, you need to know all aspects of it. And, you know, that's the big picture of an entrepreneur. It's not just, oh, I'm just doing farmer's markets, so I only need to know about farmer's markets. You want to expand your horizons and be prepared and become the expert and being held as the expert by everybody in your community. Be the go-to person. Um, and yeah, so I totally agree with that, um, Wanda. Thank you for saying that. How do you get rid of crimson clover during the growing season or do you leave it wild grown flowers during spring and summer? I grow in raised beds. So that's a good question. So the when you grow cover crops, what most people miss is that the point of growing a cover crop is not for your personal enjoyment. It is for to help your soil, build soil, um, habitat. There's a lot of benefits. Um, but to make cover crop work properly, you have to extinguish it. That means end its life while it's in full bloom at its most beautiful. That's when it is the easiest to extinguish it, and that's when it prevents problems, right? Um, and so that means that like crimson clover that we fall plant here, or anybody that doesn't go below negative 10 in the, in the wintertime can plant fall plant crimson clover. When that stuff is gorgeous in spring, that's the time to take it out. That's the time to either turn it in, mow it, put a, a, um, 
silage tarp on top of it. There's a lot of different ways to end a cover crop. You can just pull it out. If you're a small uh, home gardener or a small grower, you can even just pull it out and lay it on the ground as mulch, right? Or you can mow it, mulch mow it, and let it just drop right there. When you do it at that time, the plant is its most tender and will quickly break down. It has not set seed, and that's when you get the maximum um, nitrogen out of it. So there are reasons. If you leave it beyond its bloom, the plants get tough and woody, and they're a nightmare to try to, try to get out of your, I mean, get them incorporated or to do something with. That's why most people don't like cover crop. It's because they don't understand. They just let it go and go and go and then try to do something with it, right? So the point is, every cover crop should be taken out when it's at its peak of beautifulness when blooming, and that is when the plant is at its most tender and most vulnerable, um, and you get the maximum benefit from that. So friends, we're gonna tie it up right here because it's now one o'clock. Thank you for joining me, and I hope all of you guys are gonna show up tomorrow night, October 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, to my chat with Jenny Love about the profitability of weddings and events, and I'm giving away two thousand dollars worth of stuff two courses plus some flower farmer gear but you have got to be present during the live presentation to be able to claim your gift and um so hope to see you over there and until i see you tomorrow night and then maybe even i'll see you on you know friday inside the gardener's workshop phone app at 12 noon eastern time um, i'm going to be doing it's like all things cool flowers and guess what I'm giving away on Friday? You know, I love giving away stuff, y'all. Have y'all noticed that? <laughs> you guess what we found? We have one cool flower book, and here it comes. The only cool flower book on the planet that's available. And, you know, the publisher, I mean, we have been waiting on cool flower books. They should be here sometime in November, like mid to late November. But we have one book. And I am giving this booger away during the live show on Friday, 12 noon Eastern time. If you don't already have the phone app, I'm not sure why you don't. Go to your app store, download Gardener's Workshop Live Shop, and be there 12 noon Eastern time and enter to win the Cool Flower book if you need it, friends. Um, and because, I mean, we get messages all day, every day, people looking for the book. Um, so I'm hoping that you're going to be the one taking this home. So join me on Thursday night with Jenny. And then again on Friday, um, grab your lunch. Let's settle down. And we're going to go. We're, we're making it all things cool flowers is what I was trying to get to. That dried wall of wonder that Suzanne has built, which is a ton of dried flowers. Many of them are cool flowers. We're going to be looking at them on Friday. Um, so it's like an all things cool flowers on Friday. All right, friends, till we meet again, ciao.